There's nothing that is coincidence as to what Facebook does. They have been accumulating data about who are your close friends throughout years. So because of that, you can actually target people and offer them to buy a present for their friends. Close friends of people with birthdays in a month, close friends of people with birthdays in a week, friends of recently moved people, friends of newly engaged people. Check that out. Friends of newly engaged people. Long distance relationships. What? Facebook knows that. How cool is that? Somebody that found a new job. This is all here. New relationship. Somebody that engaged in the last one year. For example, if you have a wedding party service that you actually are a wedding coordinator, well, check this out. Newly engaged in the last three months. Newly engaged in the last six months. For example, if I select newly engaged in the last six months, let me tell you how many people it shows up. Facebook is telling me that there's 1.2 million people that engage in the last six months in the United States. So let's say, if we say that uh, women, let's see how what happens with that number. There is a total of 650,000 people, 650,000 people that got engaged in the last six months, females, and there is a total of 580,000 people, males that engage in the last six months. So if you have one of those businesses that offers something that can save uh, services people, can cater to those people that recently engage, that is a great opportunity for you to be able to use that Facebook core data overall. And it goes, guys, the list goes on and on and on. For example, politics, if you are looking for people that are liberal, conservative, moderate, very conservative, very liberal, parents, people that are uh, parents of uh, children zero months to 12 months, uh, 18 to 26 years old, zero, uh, six to eight years old, three to five years old. All that data has been accumulated by Facebook. Let's look at one example. If you're looking for, let's say that you have a book that teaches uh, parents how to take care of their teens and tweens. Well, if you can target parents with teenagers, there's 3.6 million men and there's a total of 9.2 million people, including females, that have teenagers ages 13 to 18 based on Facebook's data. Are you guys getting blown away or what? Are you guys getting the picture of the power of this? This is, again, Facebook's core data for top of the funnel audiences overall. And again, it just keeps on getting better and better and better. One thing that Facebook recently launched, uh, and that is the employers. You can actually target employers of corporations, employers of IBM, employers of all these kinds of corporations, even Apple. For example, if I select employees of Apple, uh, employees of Apple, not employers, I'm sorry. Uh, if you select employees of Apple, there's 13,000 people in the United States that have their data on Facebook that they claim that they're employees of Apple. So if you're trying to find decision makers within Apple, is there a better way to do this? If you're trying to sell a software to IBM, is there a better way to do this? People ask me all the time, should I do LinkedIn ads or should I do Facebook ads? LinkedIn ads are powerful, but they, the platform is not really that great, even though it's niche market for business to business. But Facebook, since you have the ability to target employees off, you wouldn't have to go anywhere else because people are using it. I use Facebook all the time. Decision makers use Facebook all the time, and it's actually a powerful way for you to find these audiences that are going to be interested in what you have to offer. You can target industries, administrative services, computation and mathematics. You can target um, over here on this core audience section, you can target job titles, CEOs, um, finance officers. You can target uh, IT departments. All that stuff is in there based on what you search. And again, it's all super user friendly for you to be able to find it overall. For example, let's say that you're looking for relationship status, people that have recently gotten married, they are divorced, they are, uh, let's say, for example, you have this, uh, the app Tinder and you're building the next Tinder overall. Well, you can find people that have recently been divorced, people that are single, people that are separated and try to target them and try to get a message out there about your app and your service overall. You see, the, you see where I'm going here? For example, you can target people that are uh, widowed, 
uh, single, married, in a relationship, divorce, complicated, on a civil union, all that data is in there, again, based on data that you have given to Facebook along the way, every step of the way. And we haven't even got it started with like another section. I'm not gonna get too deep into it because I think that you guys need to get in it and start looking at what I'm talking about and start going over that and clicking the different things and analyze what is my business and what type of customer is going to be interested in what I have to offer. And based on that, do some tests and grab one of those audiences and test it out. I would say that you grab anywhere from five to 10 distinct audiences and do a test to find out where you can get the lowest cost for your objective. If you're trying to get messages, where can you get the lowest cost per message? If you're trying to get purchases, where can you get the lowest cost per purchase? If you're trying to get website visitors, where can you get the lowest cost per website click? So that's what you're trying to find out. And your audience, the lowest cost determines which one is the winning audience overall. So then you have the section with interest, right? In which you can target you can target uh, business and industry, entertainment. If you open that up, you're gonna see if entertaining, they have, uh, they're have they connected with uh, music, with movies, with television. You can also look at a family and relationships. They are interested in friendship, in motherhood, parenting. You can look at fitness interests, people that are interested in pages related to physical fitness, to running, to yoga, to meditation, to bodybuilding. The list goes on and on. If you look at, for example, hobbies and activities, people that are interested in pets, in home and garden, in travel, in vehicles, that data keeps on going and going and going. Shopping and fashion. There's a section right here, which I've been using for a long time, which uh, if I open up shopping and fashion, for example, you can look at beauty, you can look at clothing, fashion accessories, shopping, and all the stuff is information that Facebook has that you can use to try to find that audience. And then they have one final section, which is behavior. So again, we have demographics, which is all the entire section that we talked about. We have interests, and then we have behaviors. The behaviors one, guys, that's power. Because for example, if you go to anniversary, you got an anniversary within 61 and 90 days. If you go to digital activities, for example, on this one, you can find people that have um, paid for things on Facebook in the last 30 days, 90 days, etc. If you want to access decision makers, you can also go to Facebook page admins and you can target people that are Facebook page admins. For example, if you're trying to run an agency and you're trying to get uh, people to help so you can advertise, um, help them advertise their services, why don't you target Facebook page admins? That's something that could be powerful because Facebook page admins generally are the ones that created the page or have a high ranking status on a Facebook page and they are going to want to take their Facebook page to the next level. So you can do that. Operating system use, primary email domain, check that out. You can actually target people that are Gmail users, Hotmail users, Apple email users. Whoa expats, you can target people that lived in Algeria, that lived in Argentina, uh, people that lived in Argentina, in Australia, in Belgium. You can target people that used to live on different locations and now they live here. For example, if somebody lived in Argentina and now they live here and you have a um, Lionel Messi, uh, the football player shirts to sell, well, don't you think that's gonna be effective if you can talk to them? Like, hey, you're probably a Leona Messi fan. I have this discount going on on this particular shirt. Let me show you what it is about. Uh, in the United States, we're proud to be Argentinians. If you talk to people directly, if you actually communicate to them, that's how you get the most results. Are you guys getting excited about this? I sure as heck am, because that list goes on and on and on. Again, if you tell me that you tried everything with Facebook and it didn't work, guys, it's not that Facebook didn't work. This is the fact. You didn't work. Period. End of story. That's what we got. Mobile device user, you can target people that have used, uh, are using Android, uh, Facebook, um, mobile tablets. You can target people that are, have uh, Wi-Fi connections, et cetera, right? Purchase behavior. Guys, pay attention to this one. This is an important one. Check it out. Since Facebook has a lot of data out there that uh, you want to be able to uh, use for your own advantage, Facebook knows who buys stuff and who doesn't buy stuff. So if you have an e-commerce business, you gotta make sure that you use purchase behavior all the time because there's a lot of people on Facebook that never 
buy anything. They just browse on all websites. They browse on websites, they browse on other places, but they never browse on, uh, they never buy anything on websites. So there's an option called purchase behavior, and that's for engaged shoppers. If you select that one right there, you're gonna be able to see 81 million people in the United States that are actively buying stuff online. So that's one out of every three people on Facebook, not all of them. So if you wanna sell products, make sure that engaged shoppers is always, always selected because that way you are have a likely tenden tendency, you are likely to find people that are gonna be willing to buy your products online. If you don't select that, you have a much less chances of converting because most people out there, two out of every three of them are not buying things on websites out there in social media. Overall, they are generating leads, they are going to seminars, but they're not used to buying stuff on e-commerce overall. And then, uh, again, this is not the end of it. I want to I want I wanted to just wake you up to the opportunities. Uh, in here, you can even have a whole, if you're a travel agency, you can uh, target frequent travelers, people that um, frequently uh, travel all over the world, or they, they returned from travel two weeks ago, uh, they returned from travels a week ago. All that stuff and all that data is accessible to you. And it's time for you to start getting it into practice. The most important element to your Facebook advertising will undoubtedly always be, always, 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 finding your audience. And again, just to recap, we talked about the three types of audiences. We got the Facebook core audience, which we explained today. We have the custom audience, which is based on your data, people that are watching your videos, engaging with your page, Facebook fans, your email list, your message page list, all those people. And then you have the actual lookalike audience in which you can grab one of those custom audiences and have Facebook find you people that are like those people that are converting on your page, generating leads, uh, people that are purchasing actions from you, uh, purchasing things from you, and that's basically a lookalike audience that you can use to scale, which is the only one that I use to sell, the custom audience, because I like to sell things to people that are already connected with my content. If they're not, I wait, and I connect them first. I have them see what we do, our message, I give them something of value first, and then I sell them something. So lookalike audiences and core audiences are audiences to put in the top of the funnel. If you wanna convert somebody at those uh, stages of the funnel up there, it has to be such a great offer that is irresistible. Otherwise, these people do not, and I repeat, they do not engage with your brand and they don't buy stuff from you. Not a first contact. People must see your face many times, at least seven times based on the numbers that we're seeing before they trust you enough. There is a, there's an old rule in advertising called the rule of seven. People don't trust you unless they've seen you seven times. Now, social media, we can make that faster. Maybe on the third or fourth point of contact, they can actually buy stuff from you. But overall, persistency is the key. And sometimes you have to pay quite a bit to acquire a customer. Well, once you acquire it, you can now start using that customer over and over every single month and providing value and getting money in exchange and then use that customer to help you find new audiences that now you can scale in turn.